Okay guys, hello, hello, and welcome back now. I definitely didn't forget to do Dante's notes, and that's why we're doing it a bit late. Definitely not, definitely not. Well, anyways, let's just get it started, eh? Start with the nest, okay? Start with Arcorp, sure. Record number one, located in District 18's nest. With what I've heard about Arcorp, it, from its related sinners, it seemed a little different from the other wings I know so far. While most wings provide many a convenience by utilizing their singularities to improve people's quality of life, our corp mainly deals in armed services like mercenaries. Our corp's power as a wing comes from the quality of its military services. Who decided that as important as a troop size is, much of its strength in battle will come from field experience and mental fortitude. In that sense, she says our corp's combatants, soldiers, employees, are like killing machines with undaunted spirits on top of being in great health. So, I was gonna say in great condition, but yeah, great health. Figure said it's common for ordinary soldiers to lose their will to fight and then flee the battlefield or fall into panic. And those who don't are the exceptions. Wonder if Arkhor runs war games and simulations or something. <laughs> oh, how little you know. <laughs> yeah, they certainly do. Oh, we have W Corp. Record number one and two. We'll do those. Oh, that's a lot of reading. Sure. W Corp, record number one. Located in District 23's nest. I haven't visited their place yet, but I learned for a thing or two about it from the conversations with the identities from this wing. W Corp seems to be operating a transit service advertised as warp trains that takes passengers from platform to platform in mere seconds. Tickets, yeah, tickets for warp trains are apparently pretty costly, and I'm told the first class ones are plain ridiculous. Didn't you just cut costs and drive at that point? Mm -hmm. It can also save some danger, doesn't it? Record number two. Writing down additional details I've heard. While cores can take you anywhere, warp trains are preferred because travel by cars can get incredibly complicated. Makes sense, considering the procedures we went through just to get into K Corp's nest. Speaking more, it seems a bigger problem is the roads are made inefficiently. They're so twisted and convoluted that it takes an unreasonable amount of time to travel between back streets areas by car. Even if the linear distance is short, the road to the destination will be labyrinth. Labyrinthine, Labyrinthine, not really sure. Reportedly, there are wide open roads called highways connecting the nest, but that comes with a set of conditions and costs as well. Ah, uh, shame. Uh, oh. Oh, that's a lot. Fine, sure. And let's make sure I haven't read these here. No, I read that too. Abnormalities, record number three. The old L Corp used to classify abnormalities into five levels. You were told us that L Corp created them based on their energy production efficiency. Name's company seems to use the uh, same level of to categorize them. I don't know, it's also danger. There some of them are really dangerous, heck. Ego, let's see here. We did this already. Record number three of Ego is here. However, if you don't stop at just being convinced and get deeply engrossed in that other sense of self, you'll be taken over by what's carrying it. That killed the sinners a few, good few times. It hurt me like hell. Mm -hmm. Next up, identity up tying, record number one and two. Record number one, a process of synchronizing an identity with this world using the thread we've gathered. It's how one brought from a different world is turned to the sinner in, our, in ours. I guess it would be like into binding the two worlds together. From what I can tell, a freshly extracted identity can't immediately transfer all of their knowledge and combat prowess to the sinner. That's why Thread must be used to uptie the identity and make it more effective. Record number two. I asked if the max, up, max uptie status as shown on the PDA is really the highest possible tier. I wanted to know if that meant that the sinner virtually becomes the same as the one from another world. I've been told it's theoretically the case. If an identity brought from a certain point in time of the world, from where it was extracted gains more experience training their combat skills further, for example, a new possibility can occur that allows for additional stages of uptime. Hey, really? Game more experience. That's actually pretty interesting. I guess that's to mean identities from certain points in time could grow stronger in terms of experience and technique. Stronger skills, nice. Thread spinning, thread spinning, number record number one. Similar job time. This is the process of making the sinners ego more powerful using thread. So I do wonder why thread spinning and not up time again. Time. I don't know, man, I don't know. Hey, breaker number two, give me a second. 
Just a bit of water, you know. Record number two. Like identities, the ego used by the sinners are possibilities drawn from the cores of certain abnormalities for appropriate individuals. However, using the ego However, using ego to its full potential requires weaving together a deep understanding and well-read interpretation of the abnormality, which is why it's called thread spinning, sort of like the idiom of spinning a yarn. Thread spinning an ego enriches the comprehension of the abnormality's mental imagery, enhancing its power and effectiveness. Ego seems to be the manifestation of some kind of mental force. I guess it makes sense that forming thorough knowledge of the abnormality and its ego is important. Upgrading identity, identity is record number one. When a sitter tears this identity training ticket, certain experiences seem to flow into them or the identity they're wearing. These experiences can make them even stronger than how they were in their original world at the time of the extraction. Well, that's what the Revenant series say, according to Faust. I get that they become better fighters with the added experience, but how did it, does it make them physically stronger too? Record number two. I got vague, but somewhat unsensitive. I get vague but somewhat sensible answers from Faust and Yusang. When an identity is upgraded using tickets, the identity's frame itself is enhanced. Summarize their explanations. Upgrades exclusively improve their physical traits. The improvements are made in ways that would have worked in the original worlds the identities come from. Additionally, when an identity with prosthesis is upgraded, the materials and components of them seem to get sturdier and whatnot. Either way, Either way, upgrades are focused wholly on physical improvements, I think. <laughs> well, that appears to be all the reading for now. Hope you enjoyed the reading, and I will see you all later. Peace out, and have a good one. Bye-bye.